hello everyone welcome back and in today's video we are going to be dealing with radiation pressure so so in order to you know solve this problem we need to first cover a few basic topics of radiation pressure we will first do that and while doing the theory we'll pretty much cover all the cases for that are there for j at once and after that we are going to come back and solve this problem okay okay so this is the most basic situation that we are going to be discussing so we have a surface who, whose area vector is inclined at some angle theta to the horizontal and then we have uh, radiation coming from the left side whose intensity is i so intensity is technically the energy that is coming per second per unit area so intensity has the units of of joule per meter square per second okay so it's technically energy falling per second per unit area okay so the first important thing we have to cover is the power incident on the surface okay so uh, some of you may say that power is simply i multiplied by a so but the problem here is that that's kind of incomplete so if let's say if um, instead of the surface being inclined at some angle i take it to be horizontal something like this so in this case you guys would say that the power incident would be zero right and we can also get the feel if i completely keep it straight the power incident would be maximum right so let's just say the area vector the area vector of the surface makes an angle theta with the horizontal so the power incident actually clearly depends on this angle theta so when in the case where i took this theta as 90 it came out to be zero so and when i take it as when i took it as zero it, it gave maximum power incident so i can kind of get a feel that the power incident comes out to be i a cos theta and uh, this is actually the relation for the incident power so so now if you know the angle theta and you know the i you can find out you can easily figure out the power incident so now let's talk about the momentum transfer guys uh, so this essentially this entire theory of radiation pressure is based on the photon theory of light so imagine the uh, electromagnetic radiation that is traveling to be packets of photons one photon you guys if you have done basic basic modern physics theory you would know that momentum of this one photon is nothing but h by lambda where lambda is the wavelength of the corresponding electromagnetic radiation and energy of one photon is hc by lambda uh, guys the momentum change or the momentum transfer actually depends on this property of the surface so accordingly we can define two cases so let's say case so case one we are taking the surface to be perfectly absorbing meaning that the photon after it collides with the surface uh, it just completely loses its momentum so the photon energy gets transferred into the internal energy of the surface and basically we don't care so basically the thing is the initial momentum gets completely transferred to our surface okay so that's case one and case two is reflection so that we'll discuss after discussing this okay guys so now in, in this case the momentum that is being transferred to our surface because of this one photon colliding is going to be h by lambda and one more important thing guys so just before colliding the momentum was in this direction right was in the rightward direction just after colliding it is zero which basically means the sur surface must have applied a force on the photon towards the left which means a photon would have applied a force on the surface towards the right Okay, so this is a pretty important realization guys so the force that is imparted due to the radiation is in the direction of the intensity so that is basically it is towards the right in this particular case so now we can talk about the momentum transfer so the momentum transfer to the surface in this particular case is h by lambda okay okay guys so now let's define a quantity n which is nothing but the number of photons that is hitting the surface per second okay so now we know the momentum transfer due to one photon colliding with the surface so now if i now i'm telling you guys n photons are colliding every second so now we can say every second the momentum that is being transferred is nothing but n times hc divided by lambda and the momentum transfer to the surface every second is nothing but the force right dp by dt so we have figured out the force is nothing but nhc divided by lambda in this particular case okay so now let's consider the incident power on the surface is nothing but p so the power is nothing but technically the energy that is falling on the surface in one second now we also know that in one second n photons are falling on the surface so i can write this as n times the energy of one photon which is hc by lambda so these two must be equal right uh, now from here we can see that n h upon lambda is nothing but p divided by c so from here we can easily get the force that acts on the surface as p divided by c where p is the incident power and c is the speed of light okay guys and uh, and from a previous discussion we know that the power incident is nothing but i a cos theta this becomes i a cos theta divided by c okay so now let's take some cases so if i take theta equals zero degree which basically means the area vector and the intensity vector are parallel so in this case the force comes out to be i a by c and the direction is obviously in the direction of the intensity vector so now let's 
discuss the reflecting case okay so now we are talking about purely reflecting cases so again we are taking our original surface which makes an angle of theta with a horizontal and we are considering light and radiation to be traveling in this particular direction so again we are going to observe one single photon here we observe this photon particle over here so its momentum is in the horizontal direction initially and let's drop the normal vector here so we know that the horizontal makes an angle of theta with the normal vector so after reflection also this angle is going to be theta okay guys so now the thing is the momentum vector h by lambda has two components one component perpendicular to the surface which is the cos component and one component along the surface which is a sine component now you can as you can see after reflection the sine component remains the same unchanged whereas the cos component has reversed its direction for the, if you observe the photon its change in momentum is 2h by lambda in the direction normal to the surface which means the momentum transferred onto the surface is a negative of this value so the delta p is coming out to be 2h by lambda and the cos theta component so and the but the important thing here is that in this case the momentum transfer is normal to the surface okay so let's call this as delta p so now the thing is we using our similar arguments we can say f is nothing but n times or uh, 2h by lambda times cos theta okay and we can write the power incident uh, and we can write the incident power as n h c by lambda and from here we can see that n h from here n h divided by lambda is again p divided by c so in this case the force comes out to be p divided by c cos theta now p itself is i a cos theta right so this becomes i a cos squared theta divided by oh i missed a factor of 2 here so there'll be 2 here as well so this is the force so in the case when the surface is purely reflecting and the direction is obviously going to be normal to the surface okay so let's say if the question was nita fraction was reflected and the rest was absorbed now in the absorption case the force came out to be ia cos theta divided by c but in this particular case the force was in the horizontal direction right and this angle was theta so the this force is ia cos theta divided by c but so the normal force is going to be the cos component of this which is ia cos square theta divided by c and in this case it is 2 ia cos square theta divided by c so so we're talking about the normal force okay the normal force uh, due to the fraction that is reflected it will come out to be nita times 2 i a cos square theta divided by c and due to the fraction that is not that is absorbed so that fraction corresponds to 1 minus nita force imparted due to absorption that is i a cos square theta divided by c we can now deal with the sphere case okay in this question we have a sphere of radius r that is placed on smooth and perfectly absorbing surface horizontal light of intensity i is falling on the sphere the a b portion of the sphere making a solid angle of ohm so this so the spherical cap that you know subtends an angle of ohm so this is the region that we're talking about so this region is given to be perfectly absorbing okay so it's a black surface and the other portion that is from that corresponds to this particular region okay so ohm steradian till 2 pi steradian this region is actually completely reflecting assuming there is no radiation that is falling on the sphere from the other sides so on the other half there is there is no incident radiation so we have to calculate the force due to light on the sphere give this problem a try guys you guys might be able to solve this with you know what we covered in the previous slides and then you can check out the solution okay so firstly they have given the solid angle ohm is pi times 2 minus root 2 steradian so if you take 2 outside this this is nothing but 2 pi into 1 minus 1 by root 2 so now the formula that the solid angle subtended by spherical cap at, at, at the center of curvature is 2 pi into 1 minus cos theta right so if you compare it to this uh, we can see that this theta is nothing but 45 degrees so the plane angle over here is nothing but 45 degrees so this hemispherical cap is given to be perfectly absorbing okay guys so uh, there is one more result that i have to discuss okay so and that is in case of 100 percent absorption okay we can use the a concept of projected area so in the normal in the case when theta was equal to zero degree if you guys remember the force came out as i a divided by c so so if you directly want to write the force on this hemispherical cap, all we have to do is find its projected area, which is pretty simple. If you project it onto the center, let's say it corresponds to this circle of radius r sine 45. So this area of this projected area is nothing but pi r square sine square 45. So the force is nothing but i a by c where a is the area of the circle. So now I'm going to prove why can we use projected area in the case of 100% absorption. So I want you guys to imagine a surface element somewhere over here, okay? So this element is first of all at the surface, which means it is at a radial distance of r. 
So the area normal is in this direction. Okay, so let's call it as n cap and let's define the angle the n cap vector makes with the horizontal as alpha, just like we defined in the previous cases. So in, and we know that the intensity vector is in the horizontal direction, right? But so if I zoom in on the DA element, uh, in cases like these, this is exactly the case that we derived in the previous page. So if the intensity vector was in this direction, we found out that the force on this element, let's just call it as df, it came out to be i a, so a uh, cos alpha. So this angle is equal to alpha, which means it is i a cos alpha divided by c. And in this case, uh, it's not going to be a, it is going to be da. So I'm going to write the da over here. So it's uh, df comes out to be i cos alpha by c times da. And the direction is obviously in the direction of the intensity vector. So for all such elements that uh, in this spherical cap over here, uh, that is purely absorbing, the net force will be in the rightward direction and its magnitude is going to be i by c cos alpha da. So I can simply find the net force on them by integrating this expression. So I can take the i by c outside and the in inner integral comes out to be integral dA cos alpha. And integral dA cos alpha is exactly what projected area is. So, so this angle over here is alpha. So if I draw its vertical projection, something like this, this is the area A. So this area over here is nothing but dA cos alpha. So if you find out the shadow area of this you know, patch element, this will come out to be da cos alpha. So if you similarly find the shadow area of all the d elements on the spherical cap, uh, then that will come out to be the projected area, the area of this circle over here. And the area of this circle is nothing but, so this comes out to be i by c times the projected area and that is nothing but i by c times pi into r by root 2 squared, which is r squared by 2. So the answer for the absorbing part comes out to be i pi r squared divided by 2c. Now let's discuss the reflecting part. Oh yeah, and guys, uh, for the reflecting part, you cannot use the projected angle concept and the reason for that will be clear once we look at the force expressions. Yeah, so in the reflected case, what will happen is light is going to come something like this and it's going to get reflected, something like this. And this angle is alpha, so even this angle is going to be alpha. So this is our d element, okay? So in the derivation page, if you guys remember, the df actually came out to be, I came out to be, as it is a reflection case, there will be a factor of two, i a cos square alpha divided by c. And again, I missed, this is going to be d a. In this case, remember guys, the df force is actually, is along the area normal. So the force directions is different in either of the cases. So in this, so in this patch, the force is going to be towards a center. Now, if I take a, a symmetrical element at an angle of minus alpha, even in this case, the force is going to be towards a center. So as you guys can see, the the vertical components actually cancel each other so and only the horizontal components survive so we have to integrate the horizontal component in this case okay so this angle is going to be alpha so dfx which is the horizontal component is nothing but df cos alpha which is again going to be 2i by c cos cube alpha da so now you guys can see why projection formula won't work for this because here we have a cos cube factor right projection angle for in order for the projection stuff to work it needs to be a cos alpha da anyway so now da there are like two ways to write it so if you know the the surface element of a a sphere it is actually r square sine theta d theta d phi uh, you can write it that way or we, we don't really need that all you all you need to do is you know take a ring element something like this uh, at the angle alpha and the thickness is going to be r d alpha so we know the the radius of this ring is nothing but 2 pi r sine alpha so the area of this ring we can easily write now so d f x comes out to be 2 i by c cos cube alpha times 2 pi r sine alpha multiplied by r d alpha okay so now it's clear that we have to put cos equals t so minus sine sine alpha d alpha would be minus uh, would be dt so this is minus t cube dt which is minus t power 4 by 4 so this would essentially the integral would come out to be minus cos power 4 alpha upon 4. The limits of alpha guys if you remember the angle started from 45 degrees right this is where the absorbing part ended and we have to go till 90 degree uh, because after 90 degree there is no radiation on the other side so this as you can see if you put 45 degree that will be 1 by 4 so this would essentially be 1 by 16 okay and this after calculation comes out to be i pi r squared divided by 4c. So our final answer for f equals the summation of these two cases uh, which is half plus 1 by 4 so it gives you 3 fourth of i pi r square by c and this would be your final answer so that was it for this video guys if you have any doubts you can comment down below and that's it thanks for watching